Well, we're talking to you on Thursday, October 7th, and I'm outside of Vinton, Iowa, talking here with Lance Lillibridge, who's the new president of Iowa Corn Growers Association. And, you know, Lance, thanks for having us out on your farm. How's it going out here today? <laughs> well, it's uh, it's going all right, considering all things. So, yeah, it's it's a, been an interesting harvest, an interesting growing year. So Yep. Well, we're out here for a harvest update today on Lance's farm. He's been kind enough to have our network come out. So, you know, you might just first, Lance, catch our listeners up to speed how the, you know, you can even go back as far as the growing season and some of the maybe the dry conditions you had to deal with and then how harvest is going up to this point for your family. Sure. So, uh, as everybody knows, Iowa's been extremely dry this year. We're about 14 inches below normal on our rainfall in this particular spot here and uh, so with that be with that considered i mean we've actually the corn did fairly well there has been other problems though besides the dryness it's we've had a it's been a, a perfect storm for uh, northern corn rootworm beetles and uh, and corn rootworms so that's that's uh given us a huge challenge as well so what have you seen so far in some of your fields? You might describe to our listeners uh, just some of the impact you're seeing from corn rootworm in your area. Sure, so that kind of uh, kind of all started back in 2019, we think. Um, we had uh, some late, har- or late planted corn, um, which drew in the northern corn rootworm beetle, and then uh, beans last year, and uh, that extended diapause, then all of a sudden we had a huge hatch this year. And uh, as we all know, weather in Iowa is so different. So between between not having a good freeze last year and the dry conditions, uh, we've, we've just got the perfect storm for them. And, and that's caused a lot of down corn. Um, it's pretty amazing though, even with the rootworm feeding that we have and the dryness that uh, we're still seeing some of the yields that we're seeing. And uh, we're still behind by about 40 or 50 bushel on some cases and, and maybe more in others. And, and we have some fields that have been affected by corn rootworms that uh, are actually right in there. I mean, they're doing very well. So it's up and down everywhere we go and, and the corn is up and down everywhere we go. So here we got some corn that really doesn't look too bad. I mean, for for being 14 inches light on rainfall, you know, to have an ear like that is a blessing. So, um, and you can see here we got pretty decent stalks. They're a little little weak, but overall, I mean, that's pretty decent. In the same field, we get our unfriendly visitors that decide to come in, and this is what they can do to the corn. So you take into consideration the rainfall that we've had, which has been not very much. We get a lot of root, corn root when we're feeding that uh, doesn't doesn't help our root situation. So uh, you see, there's some that was chewed off. Another one. And you say you shouldn't be able to pull it out of the ground like that, right? I I should have to work pretty hard to pull it out of the ground. It. Most corn, you go up and grab a hold of it and you can't get it out of the ground. That's why the agronomist will carry a shovel with them. So, yes, I shouldn't be able to pull that out of the ground. So, that's disappointing. Now, the interesting thing is, we still put an ear on. Smaller ear, it's pulled back. But in this particular farm, there is some spots that... uh, have much larger ears. You can also notice that some of the plants still have a green leaf. Um, some disease that has set in 
we got just a little bit of tar spot on this as well. And what's the effect of tar spot, Lance? Great question. It's basically going to stop you from the plant from uh, photosynthesis and uh, being able to convert that sunlight into corn, into so, energy. So, so what can be done on the, like, in, let's just say this field here on the corn rootworm front. What can be done for next growing season? So next year we will most definitely. Uh, be using an insecticide. Uh, this is a non-traded corn, by the way, too. It's not a not a rootworm corn, but we'll use a a traded corn. We'll use insecticide. Um, we'll monitor for beetles uh, later in the growing season, and uh, if we see a beetle hatch, we'll uh, come in and, and spray for those as well. So um, this is going to be about, a, in my opinion, a two-year process to get things back under control. Um, as far as corn rootworms go. So for every producer out here, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is why we really need to, to pay attention to what we're doing with our traits and, and help protect uh, those traits and, and use different modes of action to control these pests. And um, you just never know. Uh, for 15 years, we, we had zero rootworm pressure. And this one year, this is what happened. So, you know, probably was a little complacent and thinking okay well we've had things under control what's different and then all of a sudden bam here we got this so um, don't be complacent get out and scout the fields look at your roots and and uh, we'll, we'll we're gonna learn we're learning from this in a unfortunately expensive way <laughs> so going forward I think we know how we're gonna tackle it and you know uh, try to combat the problem so whenever you're out and you're, you know, you're in these fields that you have some of that down corn, you know, do you have to slow things up a little bit? Yeah, it's it's definitely hard on equipment. We seems to be putting a lot of dirt through the combine and and uh, having to run that corn head down real low, and uh, so it it does put extra wear and tear on the equipment. It does slow us down quite a bit as well. So I think that we probably would have maybe had another couple hundred acres harvested already if we wouldn't have had to slow down for. For this situation what are you hearing across the rest of the state is the pace going pretty fast this year it is that harvest is going really well um, we had a good start on beans uh, early variety beans they harvested really well um, got through them quick and then we got into some later varieties where we had a lot of green leaves and green stems yet and they were just tougher in the dickens and so we pulled out of them and went back to corn and right now we're shelling corn at about 18 percent moisture and and that goes through the dryer pretty fast and we haven't had any significant rainfall so it's been dry and we've been able to keep moving you might remind our listeners a little bit about you know your your operation out here and just some of the some of the practices that you do on the farm too sure so we uh we farm corn soybeans alfalfa we have a red angus cow calf herd and uh, we utilize cover crops on some of our ground not all of it but uh Eventually, maybe we'll get to all of it, but what we like to do is a little bit different on our cover crops. We don't uh, use the normal rye type cover crop. We use a lot of alfalfa, red clover, uh, radishes, turnips, oats. And uh, what we're looking for there is, is winter kill so that we don't have to terminate it in the spring, but also we put it on early enough that we're getting enough growth that we can graze our cows on it. And uh, so our cows will actually stay out and not come home until probably the first of December and then we'll put them on feed at home. So it really helps us on the grazing. Yeah. What are some of the other benefits that, you know, producers that maybe they're kicking that idea around of wanting to start implementing cover crops in their sure. farms? So that so that cover crop that we use, all those different things there, uh, definitely helps scavenge nutrient. Nitrogen is uh, kind of a big topic this year with uh, not having much rainfall. We think that we probably have a lot of nitrogen hanging out here yet. and those cover crops will help grab that and hold on to it. And, and uh, as that cover crop breaks down into next year, then would be available for the crop next year. So it's very beneficial that way. Uh, we also like what's happening with the soil tilth. It's really changing the soil tilth and, and that's exciting to see that. And you go out into some of these farms that we're using cover crops on and strip till and 
take a spade and stick it in there and you're gonna come up with a spade full of earthworms. And that's exciting to see as well. Um, those are so important to Iowa soils. And uh, you know, on our farm, we like to say that we're not only growing crops, but we're growing dirt. Yeah. Soil. It's not dirt, it's soil. <laughs> <laughs> but we're growing soil too, so. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting. So healthier soil, that's kind of the, the main key here. Absolutely, healthier soil means a healthier crop. So. Okay, well I know we're gonna get a kind of a look at some of the uh, rootworm and um, impacted corn here on your farm in just a bit. You're gonna give us a kind of a little demonstration of what we're seeing, but uh, kind of mentioned there that you're the new president of Iowa yeah. Corn. Um, very cool honor for you. Uh, you might talk about how things have gone so far in that role. Yeah, so it, it is an honor to uh, be elected to the executive role in, in Iowa Corn Growers Association um, and being able to represent our 7,000 members. Um, you know, one of the things that Iowa Corn is a long-standing organization, probably one of the longest in, in the nation, and it is definitely a voice um, in Washington. It's definitely a voice at the State House in Des Moines. And the bigger that membership becomes, the bigger the voice and the more, uh, more we're heard. And uh, we have a great reputation everywhere we go. And, you know, I would encourage anybody, if you're not a member, you really should consider being a member. I mean, there's so many benefits to being a member of Iowa Corn. And I like to tell folks on my farm, you know, I've got a, a marketing department worldwide. I have uh, lobbyists, I have government relations people, I have a geneticist, I have a scientist that does research and comes up with more ways to grind corn and more products. There's all of these things that are at your fingertips when you're a member of Iowa Corn and a lot of questions can be answered really easy. And again, like I say, there's just so many things that are beneficial when you're a member of Iowa Corn. And, and as you, if you join Iowa Corn and that group becomes bigger, we can do more things and we can absolutely benefit our industries and ourselves as individuals by being members. Now, of course, uh, ethanol is always a big topic. Um, and, you know, right now, as you look at, you know, like you were talking about some of the government affairs with Iowa Corn, how, how big of a role does Iowa Corn play or what kind of a role does Iowa Corn play in, you know, lobbying on behalf of the ethanol industry? Iowa corn is absolutely a big deal when it comes to lobbying for ethanol. Um, you know, Iowa corn kind of helped start the whole ethanol industry back in the 70s, and and it was it was a good move. I mean, it was a it was a great move, and you know, ethanol is such a cleaner burning fuel. It's cheaper. There's so many benefits to it. It's it's renewable. I mean, it's. This cornfield out here is the best solar connect, uh, collector that we have. And to be able to take that energy from the sun and use it in a liquid fuel, I don't know how it could get any better. Um, the carbon footprint of ethanol, it's going down all the time. And there is a possibility here in a few years that that carbon footprint would become net zero or negative. We really need to focus on ethanol and the clean air uh, I see the UK, they just bumped up their standards from 5% to 10%. So that was a big deal. And that, that's good. That means that other nations are seeing that benefit as well. So um, Iowa corn absolutely plays a huge, huge role in ethanol. Right. Well, Lance, thanks so much for having us out to your place. And I think we might hang Anytime. around for a little uh, harvest action. We'll take a look at the corn rootworm stuff too, okay? Sounds great. Thanks for coming. <laughs>